to help plan for your activities in the coming days. Here are your short-term and long-term forecasts for your region. Here's one of your favorite local forecast tunes from 2005. Stay tuned for more in-depth coverage of today's weather headlines. To upload your photos and videos, visit upload.theweathernetwork.com. This local forecast has been brought to you by Otravin Complete Nasal Care. Otravin, let the nose do the breathing. Welcome to Force of Nature Extended. It's Saturday, the 25th of October. This episode is all about the Nor'easter. We start in Maine. Boy, they have some funny place names in Maine, huh? Kennebunkport, Penobscot, Skowhegan, and this unpronounceable community. Um, anyway, the wind was boiling out in the Gulf of Maine. A Nor'easter is a very powerful storm. The winds can be as strong as a hurricane. The rainfall amounts can be greater than in a hurricane. Sluice Point, Nova Scotia. It's down near Barrington, and Barrington Passage, and Cape Sable. And six inches of rain, over 150 millimeters of rain came down. Nor'easters often have embedded thunderstorms in them as well. This one certainly did, and it flooded the streets in Yarmouth, Nova Scotia, very early in the storm's history. And then yesterday, we had rain to start, and then it seemed to want to calm down some. And then last night, oh, the skies opened up in Halifax and localized flooding throughout the Halifax Regional Municipality. Not nice at all. Look at this. Part of the problem is, you know, the foliage from the trees all coming down now, and it blocks up the storm sewers and grates, and so we get the cooling and flooding on the roads. But the amount of rain sure didn't help. And that is the story of the Nor'easter. The weather watch continues. Now, the science behind the weather. A Nor'easter, like you had off the Atlantic coast the past several days. Well, there's storms on a mesoscale or large scale that occur in Atlantic Canada and along the eastern seaboard of the U.S. You know, a nor'easter is 
as powerful as a hurricane, but they are fundamentally different. The term nor'easter has been in use since about 1612, and it refers to the prevailing strongest winds, which come out of the northeast. There's our nor'easter now. It sits over Atlantic Canada. The winds are as strong as hurricane force. The rain can be as much rain or more than you would get with a hurricane, but the fundamental difference is that these are cold core low pressure centers. That means the air that fuels them is very cold. It's getting energy from the warm waters of the Atlantic, but a nor'easter is a much different storm, though as powerful as a hurricane. Now, the long range forecast. This long ranger will get us to our day of mourning, which is coming up for Corporal Cirillo. That's a look at the uh, memorial that's been set up makeshift outside of the armory in Hamilton, Ontario, and a true show of Canadian patriotism yesterday, as literally thousands and thousands of Canadians lined the Highway of Heroes as a journey was made from Ottawa to Hamilton. I wanted to show you the Hamilton forecast for the service on Tuesday. It'll be a warm day, but there's apt to be some showers. Look at this. That's the beaches in Toronto. And that's a snow fence that's going up, which means the seasons are changing. My uh, pal, Blair Ryan Murphy, who lives in Mount Pearl, Newfoundland. This, this is for you, the long-range forecast today. Some rain in Newfoundland, showers up the Ottawa Valley, and it is still raining in British Columbia. Opportunities for sunshine? Well, they exist. Um, mostly in the Great Lakes Basin. You, it, is, it is possible the sun could shine Monday in Atlantic Canada, but tomorrow's gonna be a really interesting day. This is all this energy from the Pacific coming in, and it's starting to now appear as wet snows from the capital in Alberta north and eastward, but we've also been getting accumulating snows in the mountains of British Columbia, and we have the neatest story about Hurricane Anna and I'm going to show you the track of this storm in a little bit, but uh, it, its energy and moisture is what feeds onto the Pacific coast the middle of this week ahead. We also have, again, the Tuesday, the mild day, uh, but rain showers developing for much of the Great Lakes, and this will get out to Atlantic Canada. Your temperatures fall back to seasonal for much of the east after a trip to warm weather, and the west, of course, is very unsettled. So the next seven days, well, there's the east coast. I'll get you back into the Great Lakes Basin so that you can see as we move towards it's Halloween next week. Um, it's p possible there could be snowsuits needed under some costumes or at least an umbrella. And our weather story continues right after this.